Hey folks, in today's video, we're going to be talking about the pages, the styling, and the layout of the blog that we're going to be building using Blazor. And since the goal of this project is to replace my current blog, I think the best place to start is with that blog. I'm not gonna be focusing so much on the content of the pages in this video, but I wanna start with the skeleton of all the pages that I'm going to need. In my current blog, I have a home page, a blog feed, a contact page, an about page, and a privacy policy. I want to set up at least the placeholders for all of those pages, and then I wanna focus on the overall layout of the nav bar, and the content of each blog post. And for the most part, I do like the overall layout and styling of my current blog. So this is just a template that I'm using from WordPress. And here I'm looking at a page that's for a specific blog post. And you can see that it basically just has two columns. It has the content here on the left, and on the right, it has a connect with us section and then a recent post section. And I wanna pretty much copy this general layout. It's also responsive. So if I shrink this down, it's going to adjust to the size of the page. And once it gets small enough, that right side's going to move down to the bottom of the page. So that recent posts is now down here at the very bottom. One of the things I don't like about it is when a screen gets small like this, all of the links in the nav bar go away and it switches to this little side nav on the left here. I wanna keep at least a couple of the page links at the top of the page as well as my blog name. And what I've done is I've created a little sketch of kind of how I want this to look. This is a sketching app called Eraser. And all I've done is laid out a really basic template for what I want it to look like on desktop and what I want it to look like on a mobile page. For the nav bar, they're both pretty much the same. I want my blog name on the left with the different pages on the right side. I think on mobile, we should have enough room for this. We'll have to try it out a little bit once we get in there. And then for desktop, content on the left side with the recent or related posts on the right side. And then on mobile, content on top, and then that recent related on the bottom. Let's jump into the code and we'll start creating some of these pages as well as the different components that we're going to use for these blog post sections. So the first thing I wanna do is I want to just create the pages that we're going to have in the blog. And these aren't the blog posts, they're just the pages like the privacy policy, about, and contact. So under the components folder, expand pages, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the weather page and the error page. Then I'll create the three new pages. So I've created about, contact, and privacy. And then for each one, I'm going to go in and I'm going to add the route. Now each one of those pages has its own route. So slash about, slash privacy policy, and slash contact. Now I'll create a component that will be used for the header of our application. Under components, I'm gonna create a new directory called shared. And I like to put components in this shared folder that could potentially be used across multiple pages in our application. So I'm going to add a new Blazor component and I'm just going to call it nav menu. As I go through this, I probably won't explain every little thing that I do. I don't want this to get too long, but I will start laying this out and I'll describe the important pieces. The first thing I'll do is I'll add a header and I want to add just a little border all the way across the bottom of it. And I want that border just to be a light gray color. And then I want to have just a little bit of padding all the way around the edge. I also want this header to use Flexbox and I want the items to be centered so that they're centered vertically. And then lastly, I want it to have a height of H-12, which is three rem in Tailwind. And next I'm going to create two different divs inside of this. One of them will be for my blog name on the left. And the other one will be to hold the links on the right side of the page. So just for reference, if I go back into my little sketch here, one div will be for this script bytes and then the other div will be for these links on the right. So I'm gonna have two divs in here. The first one for the left side for the name, I'm going to give it a flex shrink, which means it's going to shrink down to only to be the size that it needs to be. And inside of that, I'm going to use a nav link because this will link back to the home page of our site. That text is going to be extra large. The link will just be to the home, so it's going to be slash. For the match, I'm going to give it nav link match all. And then of course, inside of that, it's just going to be script bytes. And in my other div, I want it to be pushed all the way to the right. And the way that works in Tailwind is you give it a margin left of auto. And that basically just means that make the margin on the left side as big as it needs to be to push everything over to the other side of the div. It's also going to use Flexbox and I'm going to say items should be baseline. Baseline alignment just means that the bottom of the text will be lined up with each other. And then inside of here will be the links to my different pages. And I just completely forgot that Blazor already has a nav menu component in here. So I'm going to copy all the things I just did. I'm gonna go into the layout folder and just paste that in there. We don't actually need this code section, so I'll remove that. And then in the main layout component, we're gonna make a few changes in here. For the main div in our application, I'm just going to give it a minimum height of the screen. And this way it's going to always fill up the whole screen. And then I'm just going to take out this sidebar completely because the nav menu will actually be at the top of the page now. And then on the main page, I'm gonna add a few classes in here. 
The first thing I'll do is I'll give it a margin on the left and right of auto. And what this means is it's essentially going to center our div on the horizontal axis. If I go back into my blog, you can actually see that's basically what this is doing now. It's going to always be centered in the middle as you change the width. The next thing we'll have to do is we'll have to set up the width of the content for the different breakpoints as it's getting larger and smaller. And the easiest way to show this is probably to go into the dev tools of Chrome. So I'm just gonna right click and say inspect. And then I'm going to find the main content section of the page. So here's the main content. And this is the one I want right here, which is the container. You can see on the left and right, it shows the padding and the margin. And you can see down here that this container has a width of 1170 pixels. And when I make this window smaller, you can see that that changes to 970. So as it goes down in size, it's going to also shrink that container. So that basically it keeps it a static width. And I want to implement the responsiveness of my page in a similar way. So I'll go back into my main layout page and on this main section right here, I'm going to add a couple widths for the specific breakpoints of this app. So when it's large, I want the width to be a specific value, which is going to be 1000 pixels. And if it's 2XL in size, I want it to be 1500 pixels. And then lastly, I want to give it some padding on the left and right side, but I only want to give it that padding if it's a large breakpoint size or larger. And, and I'll show why here in just a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this. And then for the body for now, I'm going to take out this article. And now our main layout is very, very basic. And just for the sake of my next little demo here, I'm just going to add some background color to this. For now, I'll just give it a light amber color just so we can see the edges of that div. So I'll go ahead and run this now and I'll show you why I did these things. And here is our very basic and very ugly application that we have set up. And you can see that that main element is centered in the middle of our page. And if I change the size of it, it's fixed width is staying the same until I get to about right there. And then it jumps down to the next size. And then it stays that size until I hit the next breakpoint, which is right there. And then from here on down, it's just going to scale with the width of the page. As you can see, the layout of these links on the top right isn't the best. So let's go ahead and add some spacing to that. And then let's also just make them look a little bit bigger and change their size. And I'll start by just giving it a kind of a dark gray color. And I'll give it some padding on the left and right. I went ahead and I made the text large. And I also made it just a medium bold. If I go back and I refresh the page, you can see that one. That one looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and split this. So I'm doing this side by side so we can see the changes a lot quicker. So I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this class and put it in the other links. I think I like it without the bold. So I'm gonna take that font medium off. I wanna add one last thing, which is I just wanna add a slight hover effect to this. So I'm gonna say on hover, I want the text to turn a little bit lighter of a gray. So I'll say gray 600. I also added an underline for the hover. I think that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and add that to the rest. All right, I think that's good enough for now. Let's go ahead and move on to what we want a blog post page to look like. I'm basically going to use my current blog again as a template for this new page. So if I go over to my blog, when I shrink down like this, you can see that I have the title at the top and then the author, the date, and then the category that it belongs to. There's an image and then there's the content. So let's see if we can basically mimic this. I'm gonna create a new folder under pages and I'm going to call it blog. And then inside of it, and I'll create a new page component and I'm going to call it SQL on MacBook. And since the goal for this is to replace my current blog, I want the route to match what is in my current website. So I'm gonna go ahead and update this to be the exact same name that's on my current blog. And then I'll create this little section right here. And the way that I'm going to do this development process, like I mentioned in my intro video, if you haven't seen that, is I'm going to iterate through this process as if I was developing this for my job. So I'm gonna start very simple. I'm just gonna put all the stuff in this one page. And then as I realize that this needs to be used in other pages, I'll start extracting that out into shared components. So I already know ahead of time that I'm going to need to use this on all the pages that I have, but for now, I'm just going to put it here and I'll extract it later. I'm not gonna make this look the exact same. I'm not gonna use the icons, but I want you just gonna get this general layout. Then I'm gonna put this in a flex box. Then inside of that, I'll have three different divs. And for now, I'm just going to say datetime.now and I'll just say to short date string. And then lastly, as part of the Docker category, and for now, I'll just say that I want to have a gap of say two on these items. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's go see how that looks. I'll put in that link. I need to spruce up the title. All right, so I made it a little bit bigger. I gave it a gray of 600. I add some padding on the top and the bottom. I can see I'm gonna need a bigger gap here. I've also noticed that the text just seems too small all across the board. So I'll just make everything extra large by default. It's inside of this main layout. Now I think that looks a little bit better. So that's an okay start for now. If I go back into my blog post, next is the picture and then the actual content. 
So let's go ahead and put in this image. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop the images directly in this project and I'm going to link directly to them from here. So under my WW root folder, I'm going to add a new folder called images. And I have a couple images I'm gonna drop in there. And I've added two images in here. One of them is just my logo. The other one is that same picture that I had for my other blog post. And it looks like Writer can't preview this image type, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add that image. The source for that is going to be in the images folder. And then it's just guy on ledge. And I'll go ahead and add an alt tag. And I'll save that and I'll go back into here. Now that image is there, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of padding on that as well. And I think that looks pretty good. And then everything else in this blog post is the actual content. So if I scroll down, it's just the introduction. Here's the link to my embedded YouTube page. And then a little bit further down, I have some code blocks. I'm not gonna do code blocks in this video. That's gonna be another video. So I'll just go ahead and I'll add some of this in here and we'll see how it looks. Okay, I've added in a few of the first paragraphs and you can see already here that the main difference between mine, one of the first things that stands out to me is in the existing blog post page, there's a lot more spacing in the text. If I go into mine, it's very squished together. I think what'll make this look better is just adjusting the line height. Tailwind has a way of doing that and it's with the leading utilities. So I'm gonna go ahead and say leading relaxed and see how that looks. I think it's a little bit better. Let's see what it looks like with loose. I think that looks pretty good. And so in order for this to look nice, I would need to add this leading loose to all of these different divs or I can add it to the very top or I could just put it in my layout. I think for now, I'll just go ahead and put it in the layout and see how it looks. I went ahead and added it into the main layout page. And it definitely does look better, but you can see now that there's going to be advantages of moving a lot of these things into components. So if you've ever used a tool like WordPress or you know Notion or Obsidian, any of those tools, when you create content like this, you're actually creating blocks of content. And each of those blocks has a certain type to it. So this might be a text or a paragraph block. This image would be a, you know, would be an image or a header image. And then of course you have different headings or titles. And so that's what we're going to do in the future is we're going to make these different components so that we don't have to add the same styling to all these different places all over the application. I'm not gonna finish doing the whole post here, but what I wanna move on to now is making some components that we can reuse. And there's a couple that stand out to me. The one I wanna focus on first is this section at the top here where it's the information about who the author is. So since this is my blog, I'm the only one who writes on this blog, I can create a component that will show this information for me that I can input into all my blog posts. And the layout of this component is gonna be the same all the time, but there are a couple different things that won't be the same. So for example, this date and time, obviously it's not gonna always be now, that's going to be the date that it was published. So that needs to be a parameter and as well as the category type. So I'm going to copy this and under my shared folder, I'm going to create a new component and I'm just going to call it post info. I'll paste in my HTML and now let's create a couple parameters for this. So in my code block here, my first parameter is going to be the publish date, um, date time, and that'll be publish date. And then my second parameter is going to be a string for now. And that's going to be the category type. So I will update this to be category type and I will update this to be published date. I will still use the two short date string method though, just so that it's still month, day, year. Now I can go back into my post page and I can use that component. So I'll say post info, and you can see that it doesn't actually recognize that as a component. I need to go into the imports page and I need to add that using, and then dot components dot shared, that's the namespace. And so now you can see it's all wired up. So category type was Docker. And the publish date for now, like I'll just do the same thing. I'll just do datetime.now and let's save that and make sure it's working. And it looks like it is because nothing changed here, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And I just noticed that from before, I still have my old shared nav menu in here instead of the one under components, under layout. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Now my nav menu is back to working the way it's supposed to be. The last thing I'll do is I'll set up the right-hand side of our page, which is where we had the recent or related posts. So if I go back into my sketch here, you can see this is a section that we haven't added yet. And this is going to add a little bit of responsive design into our application because on desktop, it should be on the right and on mobile, it should be on the bottom. The way I like to do this, and this is kind of suggested by most people, is you design the mobile side first and then you move up to desktop. So let's go ahead and do that. So in our blog post, I'm basically gonna have two divs, one for the main content and one for the side or the bottom part. So I'm just going to create a div and then inside of that, I'll put the two divs that are gonna be for those two sections of content. So I'm going to copy what we already have and I'm going to put it in this first div. And then down here in the second div, I'll just say related or recent. 
And if I save that and go over to our new app, if I scroll down to the bottom, you can see here I have the related or recent section, which is exactly what we want. But if I expand this out to go to desktop, you can see it's still over here as related or recent. There's a few different ways that you can achieve this. I think the way that I'm going to do it is using CSS grid. So in our parent div here, I'm going to say class and I'm just going to say it's going to be a grid. And like I mentioned, Tailwind generally does things mobile first. So I'm going to say that it should have one grid column. And then if it's, let's say large or bigger then I want it to have three grid columns. Oh, whoops. I just realized I'm putting that on the wrong div. Let me move that up to where it's supposed to be. And the reason I'm doing three columns is because I want this content on the left side to be, you know, two thirds of the page and then the right hand side to be the, the, only one third. And because of that, for this div that has our main content in it, we're going to give it a class and we're going to say if it's larger or bigger, it's going to have a call span of two. And that basically means that it's going to span two columns and the right hand side will only be one column. So let's go ahead and save that. If I expand this out, once it hits a certain size, it should expand out into the different columns. And you can see there it does. So once I hit that breakpoint, you can now see the related or recent information on the right here. And that should stay there all the way out, no matter how big it is. And so now if we go back and look at our my real blog, you can see here, that's this section over here. And so it's basically doing what we want it to do. One other thing I'll do behind the scenes is I'll create a couple more components. Um, as you can see this related or recent section, that's going to probably be the same across most of our pages. So that can be its own component. And then in the next video, I'll just do a really quick recap of what I did before I move on with the topic of that video. And it's still pretty rough around the edges, but this is a pretty good start in terms of the general layout and skeleton structure of this new blog. So behind the scenes, I'm going to fill out the about and the privacy pages. I will fill out this initial blog post and then I will push this to GitHub. So if you're following along, the code will be up in GitHub. I'll have the link in the description down below. Let me know what you guys think of this so far. One of the things I'm not great at is, you know, CSS design and layout. And so I'm kind of using this as a way to hopefully get a little bit better at that. And one way that I tend to do that is just by looking at sites on the internet. Let me know down below what you guys think of this so far. The comments are, you know, right there by the like and subscribe buttons. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you later.